Hi, this is Dr. Corey Moss on Looking Your Best. We've been doing a lot of lip augmentation patients this week, and a lot of the questions that have come up about lip augmentation are strategies in both choosing where and how you're doing the lips anatomically, and then which products are the best to use for lips. And my answer is that really it's up to the artist and really up to the patient as to what their outcome desires are. In, in my opinion, there are two basic anatomic areas that we want to, when we're using fillers alone, that we want to address. One is the lip border, or the vermilion border, vermilion from the French for red. And in many patients, doing vermilion augmentation and doing it subtly and doing it appropriately will help to restore the lip roll, a nice curvature as the white part of the lip meets the red lip. That provides youth, it provides a slight, uh, slightly a greater amount of vermilion show and really enhances the lip a lot like a lip liner would, would do. For those that have a diminished or softening or not well-defined Cupid's bow, where the lip comes up in the middle and makes a little bow-like uh, shape, those areas can be specifically augmented to define or to enhance the Cupid's bow region. The products that I use for that, uh, I really like Restylane for that product or Restylane Silk. It's a little bit stiffer, G Prime, that's the sort of, uh, it's really the stiffness of a gel, but really it's its ability to, um, to resist deformation or compression, if you will. And in the big picture, these are all very soft gels, so it means very little to, in terms of how it feels and touches to a patient. But for us doing the augmentation, it's significant. For patients that want body fullness, and they already have a nicely defined lip border, um, I, first of all, it's most important is the technique. The product chosen is not as important. Restylane or Juvederm or Bellotero could all be used. It's key that it's placed at the junction between where the vermilion is dry and where the vermilion is wet on the inner portion of the lip, the mucosa. So we call that the wet-dry border of the lip. And if we do that right at that equator, it allows for eversion of the lip and fullness to be created without too much projection of the lip. And that's really the key. The lips are like tubes, and any tube that you're filling will expand circumferentially. At some level of increase in height, the increase in outward projection is going to be so great that it, that it doesn't look attractive or pleasant. It gives the fish lip look. And, uh, I think everybody's seen the people walking in with the bee stung looking lips. One of the reasons for bee stung lips are that these products hold a lot of body water. So in general, I think it's better to go gradually and step up the volume so that we're not overdoing the lip with the product in addition to the water that later adheres to it. And there's a, an order of adhesion of water or hydrophilicity of these products that starts with Juvederm being the highest and then goes down lower when you get into the Perlane uh, variety, which I don't often use for lips. Many people have taken the uh, new Juvederm Voluma, which holds less water, and used it in an off-label fashion in the lips. Uh, this is a newer product. It's much more expensive. There's no data that and it's a great product, but there's no data that it has the longer duration of effect that is shown in the mid-phase studies that were done that shows a, a two years of duration in up to 60% cent per, uh, per of patients, again, using it in the mid-phase. So spending the extra money, uh, you'll have to decide whether or not that's worth it until we get to the point where we have actual data on it. So there's two parts to the question about that I often answer about lips which product do you choose, and if you want a little more fullness and a slightly more bee stung look, and I do say slightly in my practice because I don't like the banana lip look here in San Francisco, it doesn't go well, um, I'd choose Juvederm. So that's slightly more volume because of the water uh, hydrophilicity, the water attraction to the molecule. And if we want to do lip border enhancement, I typically we use Restylane and Restyl and Silk products, which provide a little better definition right along the lip border. A couple little caveats. This is an art. Lip augmentation, uh, and everybody sees it when it's bad, and everybody thinks that's what it's supposed to look like when it's done. Very well done lips, you'd never tell that they were done at all. So they're augmented subtly. They're augmented in a way that provides nice fullness but they're not augmented in a way that makes somebody look like they've had filler done in their lips. Very, very important. 
one of the very common errors is that you'll see a lot of fullness above the vermilion and that really has to do with placement accuracy and the precision when doing lip augmentation. For more information on lip augmentation I encourage you to go to my website at mossclinic.com or even the video blog here where you can see more information about the choices of products and how we do them drmoss.com and as always I welcome questions photographs or even videos of yourself that can describe or ask me the questions about how you might best be treated this is Dr. Corey Moss on looking your best